Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Backstage with Fred Cooper. That's me, and I'm happy to be here with one of the greats of all time, Mick, Mr. Tex Binicky. Hello, Fred. Hi, Tex. How you doing? You know, it's really great to see you again. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. you know, Good I want to. I, I, I learned something here a while back that I want to talk to you about. Your record of uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo yeah. was the first record to sell a million. It sold a million and a half, actually. But it was the first to sell the over a million, one, yeah, wasn't right, it? Yeah, right, right. 1931. Right. It was the first gold record. Was it? The first gold record. First ever gold record of all that old good music, and yeah. you came in there? Yeah. What year was that? That was uh, about 42, Two. I think. Was it? It was from the uh, Sun Valley Serenade movie that Miller did. I remember that. With the Paula Kelly, The Modern Era. Right, and, right. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. thing is still kicking around, you know. Oh, you bet, you bet. I don't Everyone's like to see him anymore. You what? I don't like to see him anymore. You don't? Because I was so young, it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have to go through that, though. <laughs> I kiddingly tell everybody I was only nine years old. Is that right? That. <laughs> okay, what year did you go with Glenn Miller? In 38. 38. Now, April 38. In that movie, the guys are in the cars driving and driving. Were you part we of did, all of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the first things we did when we first got started. Uh, we all traveled in cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did. I drove Miller's car most of the time. Oh, did you? I was, I was the only driver that he would trust to, uh, so he could lay back to sleep a while. You know? uh -huh. But he liked my driving. and. Uh, we got along fine, though. It, it was fun in those days. How close was the movie to real life? Oh, nothing. None of, none of those movies are, <laughs> are what they should be like. You know. uh -huh. They doctor them up so much. It makes for a better box office story for most of the general public. You know. Well, but, I, you know, uh, what I was thinking of was uh, uh, with the driving thing, you say, okay, that was true. Yeah, I'm too young to remember stuff like yeah, that. Where yeah. and 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 you yeah. had to you had to earn every penny you guys got. You had to drive somewhere all night. Yeah. Then yeah, play. Yeah. All yeah. for fifty-two dollars and fifty cents a week. Is that what you got? <laughs> that was the salaries to start with. Yeah. And there was some but of that. That was, wasn't bad money. Now, right? now when you, no, that was pretty good money. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah. For doing something you really liked to do. Uh huh. Uh, something about two fifty. What was it? He he offered you something and you wouldn't go to work? Well, yeah, on the telephone. He called me from New York and uh, uh, it was uh, Gene Krupa who had recommended me to Glenn because Gene had just left the Goodman Band mm -hmm. to form his own. And mm -hmm. uh, he came out and heard the, the Ben Young Orchestra from Texas that I was with in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio at that time. And we were playing there for a couple of months' engagement. And the great group of showed up, and uh, man, we couldn't, uh, you know, he was a big name and everything, and we were all doing our best playing for him. It was like... Uh, Did Krupa have a band before Miller? No, no, I don't About the same so. time? Uh, about the same time, mm -hmm. yeah. This actually was the band that Glenn formed was his second band, but the first one didn't, didn't do enough to even mm -hmm. uh, talk about it. Uh, Krupa, when he left Goodman, he started putting his own band together. And uh, he took two of the boys, three of the boys, I think it was, out of the Ben Young band after they gave their two weeks notice, you know. And I was so disappointed that uh, he didn't take me. Mm -hmm. And I wondered why until I found out later, it all came out later, that, that Krupa's sax section was already filled. He had his five saxes already and he didn't need me. Mm -hmm. But he uh, he heard me play, you know, and he recommended uh, me to Glenn. Mm -hmm. So that's when Glenn gave me the call, and I didn't know who he was. I'd never heard of Glenn Miller. Nobody else had really, uh, except uh, the uh, uh, he was a uh, studio musician and arranger and all that sort uh -huh. of thing. He was known pretty well amongst amongst the musicians in New York. But uh, he said, uh, "It's just Gordon Benicky, and it's two o'clock in the morning. I just get ready to go to bed." I said, yes. He says, my name is Glenn Miller. I'm a trombone player, and I'm starting my own orchestra. 
and uh, I uh, you come pretty highly recommended by a good buddy of mine and would you be interested and I said well sure Glenn uh, and I thought for a minute you know and uh, I said uh, well what, what's the pay and he said uh, he said the fifty dollars fifty dollars straight across the board for everybody in the band and uh, I waited just a second until I thought it over, and I don't know why, but I said, I'll tell you what I'll do, man. I'll come with the band for 5250. And then there was dead silence on his end. And when he came back, he called me something that I can't put on the tape here. <laughs> he, he called me all kinds of dirty names. And really? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so-and-so, I'll give it to you. But you're damn sure going to have to prove yourself to me, or you out you go. Mm -hmm. so I said, I think I can make you happy, man. And that was the way it all came about. Were you always a singer with him? No, I never did any singing to amount to being anything at all until I joined Glenn. Mm -hmm. And he insisted that I do some singing because... You got the 250 the, an hour more, so I mean a the, week more, so you had to sing? Some of the arrangements uh, <laughs> that he was using... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, had the it, and I mean, that's why he wanted to hear me, hear me sing. Mm -hmm. I said, then I'm just a sax player, I'm not a singer. I, I didn't want to sing. Did pretty well, though, didn't you? Well, I, I got to where I enjoyed it then uh -huh. after a little while, especially singing with a good vocal group like the Modern Airs. When did they come on board? Uh, it was about a year later. He, he about 39? Around 39, uh -huh. I think. Uh, I didn't I thought he picked those up during the war. Not true. No, he had them for uh, three years or so before he, before he ever broke up. I had the I had the great pleasure of meeting Paula Kelly. Yeah, and yeah. she came here one year, many many years ago, of course, um, seventy two about, uh -huh. and she was still just a gracious gracious well, was lady. Was she doing any singing then? Oh yeah, she was with the group. Oh, the modern. Age. And and one of the original fellows was with her, but I well, I, I don't uh, remember which one. The guy who, who started the whole thing was Hal Dickinson, and he was Paula's husband. They were married, and, uh, mm, and then there was Bill, I, Bill Conway, who was one of the singers, and uh, Chuck Goldstein. Just don't remember which Ralph one. And Ralph Brewster. That last one might have been. That was the one. original group. Was it? Yeah. They said they mm. sure had a good sound, didn't oh, they? Oh yeah, they had a great sound. Yeah, yeah. They cut some good records back there in New York. Some with Martin Block about he had that make-believe ballroom thing. Mm -hmm. uh, remember that tune? That mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's make-believe ballroom time. That was uh, Martin's theme song. And he used that for his program for years after that. Now the war comes along. Were you, uh, you, were, you were in the Navy, weren't you? I went in the Navy. And uh, where? Oklahoma, wasn't it? Well, I stayed with the... Uh, band until it broke up and uh, because Glenn was going to he had to go in he'd already enlisted mm -hmm. and, uh, he tried to take us all in with him as a, as a group mm -hmm. and uh, we tried we would have gone the whole band would have gone but there wasn't any branch of the service that would take an organized mm -hmm. band at that time mm -hmm. and uh, Shortly then after he disbanded and I stayed with the Modern Airs and we formed an act and did vaudeville and all that sort of thing. Uh, uh, shortly after he had disbanded, a guy named Clyde McCoy came along with a, his whole band and they re took off some of the restrictions. Took, took them all? And took them took all? Took them all in, yeah. Is that right? But it was too late then for Glenn to... to uh, Take his to, whole to group To get his in. whole group yeah. back. He had two or three of his originals, I think with the Air Force thing, but uh, not too many. And I was in touch with him, uh, correspond with him all the time he was overseas. Mm -hmm. Then I was about to be drafted and I had a chance to take a CPO rate in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I wound up down in Oklahoma of all places, <laughs> fighting the dry land battle of Norman. <laughs> and, uh, but I had a couple of bands there and uh, uh, it was a training, uh, training base for uh, uh, mechanics and mm -hmm. airplane mechanics mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. signaling and metalsmith guys. And was that at the college or was that no, out that was at a separate base? Out, at out, out south of uh, Oklahoma U. 
oh, up there what? on the hill at oh. the back of the base. Mm -hmm. And it, we had oh, always the 19, 20,000 sailors in there, and they mm -hmm. would go come in for uh, seven, I think it was an eight week training or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then they'd ship them out after they'd learned their trade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, uh, now I used to tell people shortly after I got out, uh, say, you, you know, I had a, a real, real important gig down there at, at Norman. I say, if you look back now, you will remember that there wasn't one Japanese airplane that got within 10,000 miles of Norman, <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> Some of the people say, yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I said, if I hadn't been there, you know, it'd been a different story. They'd have mm -hmm. blown up the place. <laughs> <laughs> After the war, yeah, um, you get out, what happened then? Well, I formed uh, the uh, Miller Air Force Band, the band his, uh, his, he had during the war. And I took 36 people out of that, as he had planned to do with the violin section and uh, oh, a huge, monstrous, unwieldy type of band to move around. But he had wanted to give me a band before he broke up his civilian band. Oh, really? Because he had backed Charlie Spivak and uh, Hal McIntyre, who was his lead alto, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, Claude Thornhill. Wanted to do the same for me. I said, man, I, I don't think I'm ready. I'd rather come back with you after you take over again and get a little more experience before I go out on my own. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about being a band leader. So his wife knew that, that his plans for me. She said, well, let's, let's turn it over to Tex. That's what Glenn was, knew what Glenn was going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I took it over then and with the big band and the strings. And it was quite successful for five years. Very good. I took it from 46 up to 50, and it was Tex Benicky and the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Or, or, no, first it was Glenn Miller Band with Tex Benicky, and then, then we changed it around, the names around a little bit. But uh, it just got too unwieldy, and uh, it was too hard to transport all the violins mm -hmm. and everything. So I decided to cut it back like it was originally. How, how long have you had this size? The strings of the had to go. Oh, you yes, know. I They're noticed the first that. to go any, any place. Yeah. Oh, this, well, I've had several different size groups since the war. Have you? I've had small, big bands, several of those. Or what do you call a small, big band? Fifteen? Uh, five brass, five, and five, fifteen, like twelve, twelve or fifteen. Yeah. And, uh, and then what's, a, what's considered a big band? When you well, say big band. this is considered big, but uh, actually uh, you sh it should be four trumpets, four trombones. I'd say I only use three trombones and five saxes. But when I had the, my band, the Miller band, I was always, I was playing every every tune. I was playing first tenor. Mm -hmm. And I had five saxes plus myself. So we had six-way things going a lot of times. Now, we don't call you the Glenn Miller Band anymore. Oh, no. There's a legal thing, right? Yeah, there is a big legal the, thing. That is his wife still alive? No, she's she's been past, she's been dead for 10, 15 years. Oh, has she? Now, yeah. But there's a pro. Isn't there a Glenn Miller Band somewhere? There is one called the New Glenn Miller Band. Oh. And it it was uh, formed by uh, uh, the Miller attorneys and all. They're the ones oh. that gave me such a bad time. Oh. Uh, they got the they, they, the name was trademarked in, in their name, and, uh, and whenever they, I'd get the right, wrong kind of billing in the newspaper, right away they jump right down my throat. Mm -hmm. I was sued several times. Oh, really? Because I had nothing to do with the way they put they, in the paper. What they put in the paper. Sure. But, uh, well, now. <coughs> You, you can say legally, uh, Tex Benneke playing... The, the Miller, the music in the Miller mood, or... Music in the music Miller mood. Music in the Miller style music. Anything like that, as long as we say Tex Benneke band, and then we go into and, playing, and cl playing Glenn Miller. <laughs> I mean... Playing the Miller style yeah. music. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, uh, I know it's going to be a treat. I have, I've heard this band, and they're good. Well, you got one of the best drummers I know. Frankie's been with me a long time. Has he? Frankie DeVito. Yeah. He's a great drummer. Oh, I know he is. Great I drummer. know. At Art DePue. 
Oh, is Art here? I haven't seen him. Yes, I know Art. Hey, first Fred. Yeah, Fred. He's oh, yeah, he's good. He was with one of my road bands years ago. Stayed with me on the road for several years. Well, he leads the, uh, the James, James, the band. James band, band. Yeah, Harry James, that's true. Yeah. And your singer tonight is... Uh, Judy Wallace. Judy, yes, I know Judy. She works with me quite a lot. A she, lot was, now she, she was with the uh, Modern Airs at one time, wasn't she? Well, is she the one? That's the new modern. Yeah, the new modern airs, of course. Yes, but I mean, she the was of Paula Kelly Jr. Junior, right? Well, listen, it's sure been good talking to you. Well, you too. And I uh, look forward to this. <laughs> There's nothing like I tell you. I play. I play 570. I forgot the the letters on that station, but when the when the Miller stuff comes on, I'll tell you, it, it, it's just it's just great. Still. I, I still like it. Oh yeah, it's I super. Still like it. I can't understand what the kids are trying to build today. With no, but uh, didn't you used to play out at Disneyland? Oh yeah. And who yeah. who was your audience? There were a lot of young people. Yeah, they, there were quite a few young ones. That's what the big bands tell me mm -hmm. that the young people really like this stuff, and uh, it just come in, a lot of them are coming around to it, but it's, it's an impossibility to resurrect. I suppose uh, that whole era, that type oh, of thing. Oh yeah, you it, can't it, be no. Home. Can't have no, twice. it's a different time. Yeah, I'm glad I grew up when I did. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-five cent haircuts yeah, and everything. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, it's it, a lot of fun. It's been a pleasure, a real pleasure, talking to you. And uh, we'll have you back. All right. What the heck, we? It's we, always nice to play out here. You got uh, a, they're a great audience here. These people. Oh, hey, they, that this is their kind of music. <laughs> Thank you so much, it, Greg. It's, it's been a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And Tex Beneke will be playing here. And I hope that maybe if you can't make it tonight, maybe next year you can. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.